Hi everybody. So in this Sonic Pi uh, lesson, we are going to talk about how you can make different parts of a song uh, by making your own what we will call functions. Um, but essentially, this is sort of like if we were to write a song and there's a verse and a chorus and then we want to repeat the verse and then we want to repeat the chorus. This is a way for us to repeat parts of our code without having to copy that code and paste it later on, um, uh, as well as not necessarily having to use the dot times do, because sometimes we may want to do one thing, do a bunch of other stuff, and then come back and do that thing again. Uh, so this makes it so that we don't have to rewrite that part over and over and over again. Okay, so this is going to happen by creating what's called a function. Now we've dealt with functions in Sonic Pi quite a bit, the play function, the sleep function, the use BPM function. So there's all kinds of functions already built into Sonic Pi, but you can also make your own. And there's so many possibilities of what you can do here, but we're just going to focus on using it as a way to sort of reuse uh, certain parts of our song to play multiple times. Okay, so let me just make a very simple pattern here. I'm going to do sort of my usual sleep, uh, sleep, Oops, not sleep 64. I'm going to play 64, then I'm going to sleep again for one, then maybe I will play 67. Uh, I'll sleep for 0 0.5, I'm going to play and then 70, and maybe sleep for 1.5. Okay, so here's what I have. So not very interesting given what we know how to do in Sonic Pi now, but this is just a very quick example, okay? So let's say I wanna have this and I wanna play it over and over and over. Now I could make this like a four dot times block uh, and that would work just fine, but I'm gonna show you a different way to do it. So what I'm gonna do is above, at the very beginning of the code that I wanna reuse, I'm gonna write define, okay? So define uh, is sort of how we start out by making a function. We have to define it. And to make a function, the first thing we have to do is give it a name. Okay, so when we give it a name, we write define, and then we put a colon, and then we need to write a name of our function. Okay, so I'll just call this my function. All right, now, this has to be put inside a do, so it's followed by do, and then I need to go all the way down and put an n. So remember, any do, you also will have an n. So everything inside of this do and end is now uh, this thing called my function, okay, which I have made. I could call it whatever I want, okay? Um, I'll show you that maybe in the next one that I make, okay? But now if I run my code, nothing happens, okay? Now note I didn't get an error message, okay? So everything's working exactly the way it's would. And if you look here in the console, it says defining fn, which stands for function, my function, okay? So Sonic Pi has now created a function called my function. But to use a function, defining it and is the first part. The second part is you need to do what's uh, referred to as calling the function, all right? Which is just, you need to write the name of your function. So I'm gonna write my function. Okay, without the colon now, all right? So this is me defining my function. I have made it, which is my function includes all the code that I have inside of the do and the end. And then this is me calling the function, which is going to make it actually play. So here I go. So now I have heard it, okay? But now let me show you, I'm gonna write my function once, I'm gonna write my function three times. So this is me calling this function three times. So I'll hear this play once because I called my function. I'll hear it play again. I'll hear it play again. So that was once. Here's the second time it's playing. Here's the third time it's playing. All right. So now anytime I write my function, it's going to play this code. Now I could go in here. I could maybe change the synth sound. Uh, to let's do maybe this uh, dark ambient. So now every time it plays, it's gonna play it with this synth. Okay, so I can basically put all kinds of stuff. I could write a whole song and put it inside of this function and then just call the function okay so 
Now you could say, oh, well, I could just write my function and then do like three dot times do and then end and do that. And it will play it three times. Okay, which is true. And maybe you want to do that, all right? But now here's where we can get into why this is more useful. I'm going to make another function now, okay? So I'm going to write define colon and give it a name. Just so you show, I'm going to write like penguin, okay? Just so you know it doesn't have to be anything related to function. You call your function anything you want, all right? So now I have a function called penguin. Uh, and in this, I'm gonna do something a little different. I'm gonna go, uh, I'm gonna add a synth. Okay, let's maybe do blade. Uh, I'm then going to do like 16 dot times do. So I'm gonna take some stuff from another project we've done. So note here, I have two do's and two ends. So this do and this end is for my function for defining it, this end and this do are for the 16 dot times, okay? Uh, so I'm gonna do maybe play, I'm gonna choose the scale function, so maybe I'll do like F4, I'm gonna use a minor pentatonic scale, uh, I'm gonna do dot choose, and then I'm gonna sleep for 0 0.5, okay? Um, and I'm gonna do use uh, random Okay, so now I have two functions. I have this one called my function, and I have this one called penguin. So these are now basically two parts of a song, this part and this part. Now if I run it, nothing happens. Why? Because I didn't call my functions, I just defined it. Again, we can look here, it said define the penguin function, it defined my function, but I didn't call them. So here's what I'm gonna do now. I'm gonna write my function, then I'm gonna call the penguin function, and then I'm gonna call my function again. So what it's going to do is it's going to play this part, then it's going to play this part, and then it's going to play this part again. So now I run it. Okay, so you heard it played this, then this, than this, okay? So now I could reuse this penguin function. I could play it again. I could reuse my function. I could make a whole song. I have a verse, I have a chorus. I could then do another. I could have three parts, four parts, five parts, and I can just alternate back and forth between all of them by just calling the name of the function instead of having to constantly copy and paste the same code over and over and over again, okay? So there you are seeing now a very powerful part about functions. So there's one more thing I'm gonna show you which is called adding an argument to a function, okay? So we see this all the time. So play is a function, play takes an argument. That argument is 60. We call the play function, we need to include some sort of number or note. Sleep takes an argument. We need to give it a number so it knows how long to sleep. Use synth is a function, it takes an argument. It takes the name of the synth that we wanna use, okay? So I can make a function that also takes an argument. So the way I would do that, all right? Let me show you here. I am going to, after the do, I'm gonna use goalposts, okay? So goalposts are the straight lines which are under the delete button. Now inside of that, I'm just gonna write a variable name, okay? I'm just gonna do a letter, you could do whatever you want, I'm gonna write S, okay? So now, I'm gonna take that variable, and that variable could be basically anything that happens in my function. So in this case, I'm gonna maybe, I'm gonna make it the name of my synth, okay? So now, when I call this function, I have to give it a uh, this argument and the argument is the name of the synth that I want it to be. So if we go here, I'm gonna write, uh, and this won't give me a pop-up, so I gotta make sure I get this right, dark ambience. I'm gonna go to the help window as well. So I click on the help window. If I go to synths, it'll just tell me all the names of it. So dark ambience, I can even just copy and paste that into it and make sure I get it right. Okay. Uh, I gotta use the colon there. And then when I call it again, I could use, let's say saw, which is what I meant, okay? So now when it calls my function, it's gonna run it, but it's also gonna take this as the argument and put it for the synth sound. And it's then when it calls it again, it's gonna take this and put it for a new synth sound. So I'll hear a different synth sound every time I play it. So here we go. All right, 
So there you heard, I had that same my function notes, but the synth was different each time I did it. Okay, so this you can do basically for anything that takes an argument. So let me change my penguin around a little bit, okay? So I'm gonna do my goalpost here. I'm gonna do one called um, RS, which I'm gonna make the random seed. So this I can actually change the notes or the pattern of notes that play. And then I'm gonna do one for sleep. I'll call that maybe SLP for sleep. Okay, SLP. So when I call the penguin function, I need to specify two things. I need to do what is the random seed gonna be? And then I can need to specify what the sleep value is going to be, okay? And that's me making that decision, okay? Uh, and then just to change it here, I'll call it again. And this time I will do a different combination. I'll maybe do 755 and I will do 1.25 here. So we're gonna hear my function with the argument that's gonna change the synth sound. And I'll hear the penguin with the random seed that I chose and the sleep value. Then I'll hear my function again with a new synth sound that I changed and then the penguin again. So it'll give me a different pattern of notes and it's gonna go faster because I changed the sleep value. So let's hear it. So there you have it. So again, now I could make even more functions and I could just go back and forth between songs. I could order them different. So I could call my function twice and then penguin twice using these different arguments. So I could make 10 different parts of my song, be able to change things about them without having to copy and paste the code over and over and over again, right? So this is how functions work. So we can kind of look at, I made a little song here. It has two parts, this first part and the second part, but I also made it so that I can change it and switch it around without having to completely rewrite the code. So that is it for this week. So I want to see you make your own sounds, uh, your own functions that are parts of the song. Uh, if you want to go back and maybe copy and paste some stuff you did from a previous project and then just put it in a function, that's fine. All right, so we have a little reference sheet here about how to make functions that I'll post. And then this is the checklist. So correctly make and call your own functions. Remember, define is how we make the function, but then you need to write the name of it in order to call it. Make two or more functions and call them to make different parts of your songs. So just like I did here, I have function, which is one part, penguin, which is another part, and then have at least one function include an argument that you call each time you change each time you call it, you must call that function at least twice. So I did that with both functions here. For example, I put an argument for the synth sound, so I call my function once, and I have the synth sound there. I call it again, I have a different synth sound, okay? Uh, so that is for this week. Make sure you're getting all those things that are on the checklist to receive credit, or I will send it back and ask you to make those revisions. And looking forward to see the songs you make and the different parts of the songs that you have.